see if our network CFR Sports UFC 282 Don Dusted in the books. <clears throat> Interesting climactic ends last two fights mentioning in that uh, pay per view card. Dana White said it was a horrible main event. I think it, it, it wasn't as obviously action-packed, but, you know, they went out there and did what they needed to do. Um, terrible judging. What on earth is going on? Now, it later transpires that one of the judges was indeed the judge in the Bellator um, main event also, which was scored very strange. So the bigger picture is, what is going to be done? I mean, we, this seems to be a weekly, bi-weekly conversation in regards to these strange judging uh, calls that seem to be made. It's uh, odd to say the least. This is not a good, I mean... UFC is a publicly traded body now. It's 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 a it's the market leader. This is putting a bit of a taint on the product, man. There's lots of events going on, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. This needs to get sorted out. <laughs> Accountability for these judges making these wild uh calls. But anyway, main event, as I say, um pedestrian of sorts, pretty technical. Um, at one point, we thought that Yan was going to uh, do the thing with the uh, low leg kicks, chopping up both legs, left and right. would say he clearly won two rounds. Um, I think everybody gave that fight. I mean, there was no deductions of points or anything. So how he came out as a draw, <laughs> you know, like, what they're doing, and why are they? Here's another point: Why on earth are they sat right at ringside, being influenced by everything that's going around them, this extra stimuli with the or the fans, etc.? They should be in a specific room, yeah, with refreshments and stuff, seeing every angle of the, of the, of the fight, um, and maybe just um, they've got microphones all around it, just hearing the blows and stuff. Forget the crowd noise and all that. Forget what we hear. Just hearing them get down here in the corner and all that. That's all they need. So they can properly judge the fight because they're making ridiculous decisions. Anyway, moving on to back down to the uh, the co-main event, which was they could have put... We know why they did it, but the interesting man, co-main event. Anyway, Paddy Piblet, strangely enough... And most people are talking about this. Uh, he, he defeated Jared Gordon by unanimous decision 29 28, 29 28. Dun dun dun. Were they, what were they watching? Uh, are they, have they been influenced or are they thinking, oh, well, you know, the UFC likes this Paddy guy, the Paddy the Baddy. Let's ensure. Or let me ensure <laughs> that uh, this guy indeed takes the victory, where it was one of his worst performances. I mean, Paddy isn't the best fighter. I mean, he's he's pretty cool to part himself to the uh, or to a certain level of fighter, but that was not the best performance at all. I, I, did, hmm. did I even give him a round? I don't even think I even scored him and giving him a round. I think, obviously, Jared was very much in this positional kind of stuff. He was landing blows, but he could have been obviously a lot more active, especially in round three. And for Dana White to kind of chastise him and say, what the hell's Jared Gordon doing? Obviously, he's entitled to his opinion. He's the, uh, the man of the UFC, but I think that was unwarranted. Those comments. Strange. Ponzinibio. Pon, Ponzinibio. Santiago Ponzinibio. Defeated Alex Morono. TKO. Punches third round. Now, 
I think most people expected Ponzinibbio to just do the thing. Obviously, Alex coming off, um, taking this fight on see, a week's notice because Robbie Lawler fell out. But not much was really said about this is a total different type of opponent. A lot more value, very much of an active fighter. Um, I'm thinking, was he Southpaw or whatever he was? Like, this was a challenging fight for, for um, Santiago. And you could see it because he was losing. He lost the first two rounds. And the corner were like, yo, listen. If you want to win this here, you've got to knock him out. Simple thing. You need to don his dance. There's no going to the decisions with this here because you're going to lose. And he went out there and, you know, as all fighters should be doing, I mean, obviously you can't finish people all the damn time, especially the higher up you get. But he went out there and uh, he did the thing. TKO with punches. Now, Paddy the Baddy got an interesting, he was gifted, he had an early Christmas present. And, uh, you know, <laughs> actually, let's go back to that. I totally forgot about this element. So he got the early gift, um, Christmas present. And then he immediately comes on with Joe Rogan. And he's like, yeah, you got to. You know, did you you got to pay me for this interview and all this. And Joe was looking at him like, "What the hell are you talking about? You, you, you daft lad! You just had a, a a controversial win. Like, let's just talk about the fight. Let's not talk about Ariel Hawani. <laughs> so as they say, he no uh, sold it. Uh, pretty cringy. And then acted like this was the best performance of his life. Anna not on. You know, he wants to boss more heads and all this kind of thing. This decision victory, you, you need to finish people in a dominant fashion. And Jared Gordon was put there for you to do so, and you did not do that. And we know that Jared Gordon's tough, but you should have finished him, right? And he was real, real confident. He's, I think he's, well... I'm going to hypothesize, and just based upon his the, the the exterior, which we are all seeing, he's not surrounding himself with the right right people, man. He's the, the money thing must have gone to his head. He's around the wrong folk, and he's just acting like an idiot. <laughs> you know, he's not doing himself any favors. Um, he's obviously very visible and quite successful. Um, and in my bag, fifty toes and bone. Lawit, Ilias Tapuria defeated Bryce Mitchell, and it was just a total shot out. I ex I thought, I mean, you know, uh, Bryce for Edson Barbosa last. Now Edson Barbosa is, you know, he's getting on in age. He's got some miles on him. Moved down a, a weight division, and he put it on Edson Barbosa. He actually outstruck him. So I was thinking, okay, this is going to be pretty competitive. You know, this is clearly a striker versus grappler. grappler. But as we can see, man, you're like, you know, in the higher weight classes, you can be a, have a little bit more miles on the clock and use your ring general, um, you know, your, your experience, in essence, to maybe defeat an, an, a, a young fighter. Nah. Not in the the young the other weight classes. You're not you you you're not going to get away with that. <laughs> um, Bryce tried. He tried his best, but he just got pieced up, man. He got pieced up in the first round. Pieced up in the first round. Tried his thing. Um, second rounds, arm triangle choke. Dance was done, and he tapped pretty quick as well. I would have thought that Bryce would have um, went out. You know, some fighters, they're just, you know, they ain't tapping. They're, just, <laughs> they're going to sleep. But a lot in this card, like, people were tapping real, real quick, man. You know? Uh, DDP defeats Darren Till via submission, rear naked choke, and Darren Till gave up hella quick as well. 
Crazy. First round. You could have potentially stopped that fight based upon 60, is it 60 or 60 plus unanswered strikes? I mean, fair enough. He's saying, yeah, yeah, I'm all right, man. These 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 punches are all right. They're hard, but I'm cool. Yeah, but you're not defending yourself, though. <laughs> That's the only thing. Um, I'm kind of glad they didn't stop it because second rounds was clearly Till's rounds. Um, and Duplessis said he wasn't tired, but he looked like he was real tired in that second round. Round three comes... A game pretty competitive. It wasn't a total washout, but Darren Till needs to reconsider what's going on, move up in weight and stuff. I don't think this is working for you because DDP looks a lot bigger than, than you and stuff frame-wise. Um, you're getting up there in age as well. You need to seriously look at your lifestyle. Move back down to 170, maybe. Yes, well, yes. That's exactly what you need to do. And uh, make, put on some muscle, not too much. And, you know, compete at that level. Because you've, you've <laughs> you know, this is like a, from the heights, they've really built him up, et cetera, et cetera. He got defeated by Woodley. And then look at both of their careers since that fight. Like, it's not good at all. Darren Tool's cool. He's cool. He's an entertaining fighter. Um, He should have, rather than chasing all this money thing, he should have accepted that fight with Rocky and, you know, solidified who's the best in the in Europe. But, you know, all good. All good. But, yeah, you need to jump back down to 170, mate. That's exactly what you need to do. What else was a uh, roasted little you to did the thing? Rene Hutro, one minute and the uh, well, first round, like almost like two and a half minutes or something like that. Um, Edmund Sebastian, excellent comeback um, win. Com not comeback in regards to he was losing. He was losing historically the last couple of fights, man. He was on a was it two fights uh, losing skid or three fight even. Uh, Lugiambula is tough, boss, and he's got some power. Um, Edmund moves camps and stuff, and we could see massive improvements, a lot of movement and stuff. They both was taking some nice blows, but uh, Edmund got the win. Chris Curtis, TKO punch. Actually, no, it wasn't a TK. It was a knockout, wasn't it? Because he he, he he got knocked out. Then he came to after getting punched again. Then he got knocked out. It was an interesting one, that one. Chris Curtis looking very good. Joaquin was was looking good as well, but he was just swinging too heavy, man. He wasn't, you know, he, he's, he's very explosive. He just needs to be mixed up technique with this here. Billy Quall uh, Quantrello, Quantrello, whatever his name is. Got mobbed in the first round. Um, Alexander Hernandez, he's a real good fighter. He's moved round and down to featherweight, making his debut. It seems like he's a uh, he, he can only fight for one round. Because that first round, he was killing it. If he could have got the, the victory, that would have been it. Dance, dance done. Paycheck. Showing, showing um, and, and win money. Potentially an even a, a, a bonus for, for the finish. But nah, man. We need to, and I think he's has he changed camps as well, maybe or something. I don't know, but his gas tank needs to be examined. He's not not necessarily his fight IQ. He's he's a very talented fighter. Um, something something's not right there. He, 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 it's fifty minutes, not five minutes. <laughs> so whether you had some kind of like you know, because all fighters come into fights with issues and stuff. Like, I don't know, but that needs to be addressed because that should have been your victory. Uh, what else stood out to me on this one? There was another one. That was... No, that was it. That was it. So, yeah, good card overall, but uh, anticlimactic for the ends. What are your thoughts? Who 
what's next in the horizon for um for Darren Till? What's next in the horizon for Baddy the Paddy? <laughs> like, comment, subscribe, share. Make sure you uh, get over to the old um, Instagram, the Twitter, and let's get these uh, subscriber numbers up. <laughs>